Question one. In question one, in your notes on page uh, 51, it says the principle of operation of a weighing machine, such as scale, bathroom scales or something, is shown in figure 3.11. M is 50 kilograms and K is 100 kilonewtons per meter is the measurement of diffraction uh, X for a given weight. Okay, if mass M of 200 is placed on the machine, find the expression for X. Okay, so we've got to find um, the solution for X. So we've got our, like I said, ground down here. We've got a spring. We've got M here, little M here. That's X, that's K. And then we have a big M, the object that we're weighing, being applied to that system. So obviously for this bit, okay, there's our, there's our system, and this bit is our applied force. Okay, so we can obviously redraw that. which is big M times by G. Is big M times by G a constant? Does it vary with time? No, it's a constant. And so, we can go, because I've given you the equations in the formula sheet, we can go straight to that solution. We know that X of T equals F naught upon K, one minus cosine of omega naught t. Okay, that's from your equation sheet. Omega naught is going to be the square root of little m upon k, because that's of the that's the natural frequency of the system. Okay. And obviously f naught is going to be big M times by G. So apologies, obviously omega naught is root k upon m, not m upon k. K upon M. M was 50 kilograms. And K was 100 kilonewtons per meter. So we have 100 times 10 to the 3 <coughs> over 50. And if you do those sums, you end up getting 44.72 radians per second. And big MG, well that's 200 times by 9.81. And for that you get 1.962 times 10 to the 3. Uh, yeah, times 10 to the 3. Yeah, nine point eight one times by two hundred is nine, uh, one point nine six two times ten to the three, and so you can plug the things in. So you end up with here, if um if this is a hundred times ten to the three, and then we have one point nine six two times ten to the three, we end up with zero. Uh, we end up with uh, zero point zero one nine six two. One minus cosine of 44.72 T. Is that correct? Let me, I'm not sure about that first term there. We've got two times 10 to the three divided by 100 times 10 to the three essentially. That's correct. There we go. That's correct, yes. <coughs> so that's our solution for X of T. That's part A. Part B, the question says, 
plots your answer, I believe. Plot x against time. Okay, well, like I said, if I was going to plot cosine omega naught t, that would look like this. And so on. Minus cosine omega naught t is obviously upside down version of that. So let's start down here. Do you agree? 1 minus cosine omega naught t is basically this thing but added 1 to it. So obviously we're now going to start up here. Um, that's, uh, that's 1, that's 2. We end up going up here. And obviously f naught upon k times by 1 minus cosine omega naught t is we end up with um, this thing. Instead of being 2, it's 2 f naught upon k. And the cosine is centered around naught upon k. So that's f naught upon k. And that's 2 f naught upon k. And so on. And your period, t naught is 2 pi divided by omega naught. And it says, part C, discuss the implications of your findings. Well, basically, we have an offset sinusoid that's centred around mg upon k. OK? So, describe the sinusoid in your, in your own words. So, for part A... We've got our system up here with k and m, and there's our solution from your equation sheet. We don't have to, we don't have to go through and solve it. But it's a recognizing, obviously, that this system is a constant forcing function, so you know which equation to use. You then apply root k upon m to get omega naught. Okay, so there's that, 44.72. And then f naught, quite clearly, is m times by g, big M times by g. So we end up with 1.962 times 10 to the 3. You take f naught and omega naught and plug them into this equation. You end up obviously getting f naught divided by 100 times 10 to the 3 gives you 0 0.01962. And then we have 1 minus cosine times by 44.72, which is here, times by time. Part B asks to plot it. OK, well, here I've gone through. Cosine looks like that, which is quite clear. We should understand that. Minus cosine is basically this plotted upside down. So we start at minus 1 instead of going to 1. OK. If we do 1 minus cosine, well, basically, this is this, this term plus 1, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same thing. So obviously, the whole, whole lot moves up by 1. So we moved up by 1. So now, instead of being centered on 0, we're centered on 1. OK, and obviously, f naught times like uh, f naught upon k times by that lot basically scales this to f naught upon k. And so instead of this being 1, we have f naught upon k. Obviously, that would be 2 times f naught upon k up there. OK, and there's our solution. With the period. <coughs> and, um, and the implication is it's an offset sinusoid centred upon mg upon k, or f naught upon k.